So why do I include three different types of plastids in the dynamic cell lock kit? Well, there are many reasons. The first reason is because, in my experience, most students believe that all plant cells are green because the only plastid that they've ever learned about is a chloroplast. And if a cell has chloroplast in it, it will be green. However, we know that plant cells are not all green. So for example, if you were to look in a tomato cell or a red pepper cell or a petal that's red, you would find that there the plastids are not green, but they would have a red color. The red is from their inner membrane having not chlorophyll, but a colored pigment. And this would be the same in any color petal that you might think of or fruit. They would have that color inside, and then this organelle is considered a chromoplast, a colored plastid. If instead you looked in a, a potato or a root of some plant, you might find that starch is stored there. And we know that if you stain starch with iodine, that the uh, color becomes a purplish, bluish, blackish kind of color. So the uh, starch-containing plastid, the ameloplast, has been colored on the inner membrane a dark purple to represent that it's been stained with iodine. So now you are able to, to have your students model uh, a variety of plant cells, cells that are green, cells that are colored, cells that contain starch, uh, because you have multiple types of plastids. Another reason why it's important to have different types of plastids is for you to be able to teach about differentiation. It's a very difficult topic to teach, but by having a variety of plastids, it actually makes it pretty simple. In any one plant, all the plastids within the cells are genetically equivalent because they all came from one beginning cell, one fertilized egg. So um, depending on where the cell is, it differentiates into a particular, this, the plastids inside it differentiate into a particular type of plastid. If the cell is in a leaf, the plastids will turn into chloroplasts. If the cell is in a root, the plastids might turn into ameloplasts. No need to do photosynthesis when there's no sunlight. And then if the plant is in a colored area, like a petal or a fruit, you'll end up with chromoplasts. Now in your kit, there are eight different, there are eight of these outer membranes, and you can snap in one inner membrane and pop it out with your thumb, and then snap in the other. And your students will do this, and this should reinforce the notion that these are all equivalent plastids, genetically equivalent, and that it's just a matter of which cell the plastid is in that determines what function it's going to have.